Chess friends, how are you? Today I am gonna teach you the strategically rich opening Indian defense. When facing d4 if black replies with the flexible knight f6, white's most challenging continuation is the space gaining c4. When black has a wide variety of options to consider the king's Indian defense prepares a kingside fumetto with g6 in bishop g7 followed by castle in king's side, in this popular opening which we cover in another video prepares to strike against white center with an eventual d6 and e5, leading to complex double-edged play, in this video we're going to study another way to prepare counterplay with d6 in e5, known as the old Indian defense starting with d6, white's most direct continuation is knight c3, activating the knight while preparing to build a broad center with e4, it's possible for black to shift gears with g6 in bishop g7 transposing into the king's Indian defense in the old Indian defense, however after black strikes in the center with e5, the dark squared bishop typically enters the game from the less active e7 square, preparing the central strike e5 with knight b to d7, as one solid option but it's worth noting that black can strike, in the center immediately with e5 introducing the first important central confrontation in the old Indian. This move order may appear inaccurate as white can open the d-file with d takes e5, d takes e5 forcing an exchange of queens with queen takes d8 check, king takes d8, at first glance appears black's position is clearly worse, but with a proper understanding of the position black should not face any serious problems in the queenless middle game that will take center stage, although black's king is committed to the center, this is not so easy to exploit, one popular idea is c6. Restricting white's knight on c3 from invading black's territory by moving the c-pawn, this clears the c7 square for black's king to escape the open d-file, since white is exchanged pawns on the d-file, this liberates the dark squared bishop affording it a more active role than is typically expected in the old Indian, speaking of bishops on the king's side, white's light squared bishop is restricted by its own pawn on c4. So this bishop may find greater activity down the long diagonal from the g2 square, which is yet another reason black may want to consider playing c6, restricting activity on this important diagonal, that being said there is still plenty of room for both sides to create an interesting positional struggle, but it's important for white not to expect an objective opening advantage from this early exchange of queens. d takes e5 is certainly worth exploring, but since it does not promise anything special, White may search for more testing options, one natural path to explore is to clarify the tension in the center with the space gaining d5. White may prepare to strengthen the central light square grip with e4, inviting black to transpose into the king's Indian defense with g6, followed by bishop g7, a provocative option to explore is bishop f5, fighting for control over the e4 square, the interested viewers encouraged, to examine f3, preparing to expand in the center with e4, when black can disrupt this plan is by first playing e4, leading to concrete play, if black wants to play in a more solid and straightforward style. Then we'll see the signature old Indian move bishop e7, activating the bishop preparing to meet the space gaining e4. By castle in king's side white has no shortage of options, including preparing a king side fumetto with g3, reinforcing the center with f3, strengthening the light squared central grip at the expense of weakening some kingside dark squares, another interesting idea is to play, supporting the center with bishop d3, activating the light squared bishop while remaining flexible with the knight on g1, since white has built a strong light squared central structure. This softens important dark squares that will provide essential counterplay for black, Advancing the pawn from d4 to d5 is weakened the c5 square, so black will aim to activate a knight on that square, if your opponent prepare counterplay on the dark square starting with a5, grabbing more queen side space while fighting for control over before an important square to control in order to post a knight on c5, developing the knight to e2 is one interesting option. But white decided to play the prophylactic h3, preventing a knight or bishop from accessing the g4 square, so white is prepared to continue with knight f3, in bishop e3, the queen side knight entered the action with knight a6, eyeing both the c5 and b4 squares, white continued to sensibly develop with knight f3, it's possible to play knight c5 immediately, adding pressure against the center as well as the light squared bishop, but this is well met by bishop c2. 
avoiding any unnecessary exchanges which tends to favor the player with less space, if black decided to first increase the pawn tension in the center with c6, preparing a well-timed exchange on d5, white continued with bishop e3, centralizing the bishop while preventing an immediate knight c5, as this would lose upon after bishop takes c5, d takes c5, hanging the pawn on e5, with this in mind, black reinforced the important c5 square with knight d7. Notice moving the king's side knight also allows the possibility of playing a future f5 pawn break if it proves desirable, white improved his position by castling, we have reached a typical old Indian position in which white enjoys a space advantage with more active pieces, white will often seek to increase the space advantage on the queen's side with a3, preparing a well-timed before, black's job is to apply pressure against white's center and, the seek active counterplay. We see these respective plans in action after knight d to c5, the knight challenges the light squared bishop while also enjoying protection from the other knight on a6, which also continues to observe the b4 square, white avoided a potential minor piece exchange with bishop c2, if black does not respond energetically, white is prepared to play a3, rook b1 and evict the knight from c5 by playing b4, building serious queen side momentum, notice that knight b4 is not an effective idea. As white can simply play bishop takes c5, preparing to once again win a pawn on e5, in the game, black decided to prepare counterplay with bishop d7, when white continued with the plan of queen side expansion by playing a3, black was prepared to meet this move with the timely exchange c takes d5, opening up the c-file while clearing a path for the light squared bishop on the e8 to a4 diagonal, preparing to support a potential queen side clamp with a4, in response to black clarifying the central tension. White has several reasonable ways to capture on d5, he decided to play he takes d5, committing to play on the queen's side while opening up the b1 to h7 diagonal for the bishop, supporting the c-file with rook c8, followed by expanding on the king's side with f5 is worth exploring, but in the game black decided to play queen e8 adding a third defender to the a4 square, while also eyeing activity on the king's side after an eventual f5, since black is now prepared to play a4, clamping down on the b3 square. Restricting white's pawn on b2, white decided to play the important positional reply, b3, notice that a4 would run into trouble after b4, attacking black's immobilized knight on c5, so white enjoys a promising position thanks to preserving the important option of playing b4, squeezing black on the queen's side, there is no denying black is under some serious pressure and must find ways to keep the game complicated, rook c8 remains an important option. Providing an important presence on the c-file, followed by expanding on the king's side with f5, once black decides to play f5, this supports the space gaining e4, opening up lines on the long dark square diagonal for black's bishop to enjoy after bishop f6, creating some interesting complications that both sides must navigate carefully, so, back to the opening, the space, scanning d5 is a committal decision that can lead to subtle positional play after bishop e7, or black may decide to transpose into the king's Indian defense with g6 after white is committed to this structure, another option is to support the center with the more modest e3, the white's main line is to increase the central tension with knight f3, supporting the d4 pawn while adding a second attacker against e5, this is one of the more critical choices the old Indian player has to face in the opening, knight bd7 is black's most popular and solid choice. But it's worth briefly introducing the sharper, more chaotic choice e4, accepting white's invitation to advance the e-pawn forward, provoking incredible complications, since the knight is under attack, Knight d2 is one way to add pressure against this brave central pawn, but white can also play in the style of former world champion Garry Kasparov with knight g5, attacking the e4 pawn from a more active square, defending the pawn with the strange looking queen e7 as possible. Leading to concrete play after queen c2, intensifying the central debate, Kasparov's opponent Grandmaster Jonathan Spielman defended the pawn while activating another piece with bishop f5, True to his dynamic style Grandmaster Kasparov played the disruptive shot g4, confronting black's bishop while preparing to activate the light squared bishop with bishop g2, greeting bishop takes g4, with the patient bishop g2, surrounding black's now doomed e4 pawn. 
When after black continued to develop with bishop e7, Gary collected the e-pawn with knight g takes e4, knight takes f6 check discovering the bishop's attack against the b7 pawn is in the air, so Grandmaster Spielman exchanged knights with knight takes e4, bishop takes e4, white's light squared bishop comes to life on the long diagonal, threatening the unprotected b7 pawn, so black understandably blocked this threat with c6. Taking advantage of the newly opened g file with rook g1 is a strong option to consider, renewing the threat against the b7 pawn with queen b3 is another interesting option, in the game Grandmaster Kasparov preferred queen d3, centralizing the queen while discouraging kingside castling, white enjoys a strong initiative in this promising position, although Grandmaster Spielman went on to hold the legendary world champion to an eventual draw, so, back to the opening. Instead of provoking sharp complications with e4, requiring a concrete understanding of the specific move orders, black's most solid reply is knight b to d7, when we reach the main line of the old Indian after e4, black firmly commits to old Indian play with bishop e7, when after the typical bishop e2, both sides tend to castle king's side. Grandmaster Julio Grand Zeniga known for his creative approach to the game, demonstrated one instructive plan with rook e8, intending to play bishop f8, revealing the rook's pressure down the e-file, while preparing to later open the e-file with e takes d4, the pressure against d4 will be intensified by rerouting the bishop on the long diagonal with g6 in bishop g7, leading to lively play in the spirit of the king's Indian defense. He was able to effectively use the strategy against his world elite opponent, Grandmaster Arnish Giri, winning an instructive game in a Fidey World Cup competition, that being said Grandmaster Gary's solid plan of playing rook e1. Preparing to reveal the rook's support of the center with bishop f1 was not the cause of his eventual defeat, this is a dynamic option definitely worth exploring, but the typical old Indian approach is to play c6, this move opens a diagonal for the queen, helps reinforce the center and most importantly it prepares black's typical play plan of a6, and b5 fighting for queen side space, one way for white to handle this plan is to follow in the footsteps of Grand Master Peter Fiddler by playing rook b1. Preparing to meet the typical a6, with b4 expanding on the queen's side, creating a connect 4 type of pawn structure on the fourth rank, instead of playing b5 his opponent Grand Master Vessel and Topolov decided to avoid intensifying the queen's side confrontation by playing queen c7, reinforcing the d6 pawn, Rook e8 preparing to clear space on the e-file with bishop f8, followed by it takes d4 is worth investigating. But if black decides to continue with the traditional old Indian plan of expanding on the queen side with b5, this is well met by increasing the tension with a4, it's not every day that you see such a massive pawn presence on the fourth rank, but white's main advantage in the old Indian is controlling more space, in behind it the potential for more active piece play it's possible to respond with a move such as bishop b7 trying not to resolve the pawn tension accepting a somewhat passive position in the process, if black wants to clarify the tension and try to create some action then we may see the exchanges b takes c4, bishop takes c4, followed by exchanging another pair of pawns with e takes d4, knight takes d4, white centralized knight is attacking the c6 pawn, while also eyeing the advanced f5 square. Once again black can decide to play more passively with queen c7, or bishop e7 supporting the vulnerable c and d pawns, but in the spirit of generating counter play, black can take advantage of the newly vacated e5 square with knight e5, defending the c6 pawn, while attacking the light squared bishop, maintaining the tension on the a2 to g8 diagonal with bishop a2, is one interesting option and white may also consider bishop e2, keeping a close eye on both sides of the board. We see a typical middle game position taking shape in the old Indian, white enjoys a space advantage, more active pieces as well as a superior pawn structure, notice that black's three pawn islands will require careful attention, that being said black's position isn't so simple to break down, so such as queen c7, or bishop d7, supporting the tender pawns on the d and c files are definitely worth consideration, the old Indian players by no means forced, to sit around passively and may seek to disturb this generally positive trend for white with a disruptive move such as c5, challenging the b4 pawn while clearing the long diagonal for bishop b7, intensifying the pressure against white's center. So, 
Thanks for watching my video and if you want to get more theoretical openings like Sicilian, Caro can, then you can comment me, wish you all the best, thanks for watching subscribe for more bye bye take care see you soon.